I grew up in Nice Town, um, not too far from, from here. In Nice Town, there was a saying at one time that there's nothing nice in Nice Town. You have a whole bunch of people offering you drugs, guns, and, and just a way to go back to jail or die in them streets. Growing up around here on the other side of the bridge, um, we didn't uh, see a lot of people uh, doing the right things, let's just say that. We hadn't really seen many other people in our family or even in our community that we knew of that were college graduates. When I was in elementary school, my mother told my brother and I that we were going to college. I did very well in high school. I actually got a scholarship for um, a local university. Four years into the five-year program, I had gathered experience through my co-op, and I was offered a great job. When I started working, time just did not allow for me to complete the degree. I'm grateful that I found out about WGU, where I could take classes that fit my schedule. It's not only did I walk away with a degree, but I also walked away with a lot of certifications. Shane runs our Information Technology Division, which is a really complex and challenging set of activities. I am Vice President of Information Technology at a company that 
drives growth to every corner of Philadelphia. It's rewarding every day to know that I'm making a difference. I heard in a poem, if you hang around wolves, you'll learn how to howl. If you hang around eagles, you'll learn how to soar. Um, Shane is an eagle. Even at a young age, he was always trying to figure out how he can help others. He is truly an inspiration to everybody at PIDC, and I think now through this mural, he's going to have the opportunity to be an inspiration to everybody in this whole community. It's my hope that people will take a look at this, learn about Shane's story by reading the plaque, and be inspired. It feels so good to see him up there, and then to think about the road he has traveled. I'm just so proud, very proud. He, he turned out pretty good. You cannot drive around Philly without seeing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of murals. And they tell a story, and it's a neighborhood story. They're important because they tell the story of Philadelphia. They tell the story of the community. And what he shows is to people that they too can do it. A future generation will see that someone just like them can make it. Someone just like them has a story to tell. And maybe it'll spark something in them to say, that's his story, so now I'm going to write mine. I chose WGU because I really enjoyed the ability to work at my own pace and from home. Earning my degree has put me in the direction I need to be in order to be a really valuable member of uh, the type of company that I work for now and want to continue to work for. I'm really thankful to WGU for helping me get there. College wasn't built for me. It didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Test day's test day. Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you.
Before I was a nurse, I started out as a nursing assistant and I also joined the military at the age of 17. In 2000, I got a really good opportunity through the military to go to a civilian program to become a licensed practical nurse. And I did that for about 18 years before I finished up my degree with WGU. My name is Andrew Nagel. I'm a registered nurse with the Indianapolis VA and I got my BSN from WGU. In the United States military, I was initially trained uh, back in the 1990s. It was called a 91 Bravo, which was a combat medic. I served in everything from combat support hospitals to uh, ambulance companies. Uh, I did a lot of instructing, and so that kind of brought me to 22 years, and after 22 years, I felt it was finally time to retire. Working at the Indianapolis VA as a registered nurse is outstanding. It's an amazing place to work. I kind of am specialized in that I follow congestive heart failure and COPD patients specifically. Working for veterans, taking care of veterans, working amongst veterans because a large portion of our working force is veteran also. You know, that as much as anything has kept me in touch uh, with my former career in the military and it's been wonderful. For me, the rewards have been being part of a team that goes out and gives vaccinations to patients who are stuck in their homes and can't get out to hospitals or clinics. And they are so thankful. I can walk into a veteran's home and we may come from vastly different worlds. Our upbringings might be different. We might be from different parts of the country. But because we have both served our country, we have that commonality. And as a nurse, that can be a very powerful thing because it helps build that nurse-patient relationship. And they'll chat your ear off. I mean, they're just happy that you're there and so thankful that you brought this medication out to them that's gonna help them you know, save their life, hopefully. Now is a great time to be a nurse. You're gonna feel good about what you do at the end of the day because you're helping people who need help. Once you've experienced the benefits of WGU's affordable, personalized approach to getting your degree online, it's natural to want to tell everyone you meet. Now, there's an easier way to let friends and family know about WGU. 
Refer a Friend is a platform that makes it easy to tell friends and family about the benefits of WGU and earn rewards. Sign up just once to get a personalized link that you can share with as many people as you want on blogs, emails, forums, and your favorite social media platforms. You can track how many people have checked out WGU from your link and earn cool WGU gear in the process. More referrals, more rewards, more convenient. Sign up today to refer a friend and help us change people's lives through education.
From the Leocora Center, this is the 2022 Western Governors University commencement in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This ceremony is for bachelor's graduates. This is a live broadcast and will be available for replay on YouTube and WGU's website. Hello everyone and welcome to the 86th commencement for Western Governors University. I'm Rebecca Watts, Regional Vice President at WGU. Welcome to Philadelphia. <laughs> Graduates, families, and friends, thank you for joining us as we celebrate this very special occasion. Our ceremony is being recorded and streamed live. A special welcome to all our online viewers joining us across the country and around the world. If you are able, please stand for the processional and remain standing for our national anthem.
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled everyone. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome everyone. I'd like to thank Sean Gilbert of Ludington, Michigan for performing our national anthem. <clears throat> Sean has been sharing his artistic talents with his community for two decades. He is a saxophonist, a vocalist, and an actor. He's competed in the 2013 Voice of McDonald singing competition, earning a place as a US top 25 sem semifinalist. Completing his, completing his bachelor's in data management and data analytics from WGU in 2021, Sean works as a data specialist with West Michigan Community Mental Health. In this role, Sean helps maintain and improve data systems used to coordinate and provide mental health services to the community. Thank you so much, Sean. It's my honor to convene the 86th Western Governors University commencement. As a Pennsylvania native, I'm excited to be here in the city of brotherly and sisterly love with all of you today. Please know that the safety of our graduates, guests, faculty, staff, and all attending or supporting this commencement is of the utmost importance. We thank each of you for taking the precautions necessary to allow us to host this event safely. In case you haven't heard, this year we are celebrating our 25th anniversary. In just 25 short years, we've had the privilege of helping many graduates find new pathways to opportunity through higher education. In our first 20 years, we recognized nearly 100,000 graduates. And now, just five years later, we've exceeded 275,000. We look forward to continuing our tradition of breaking tradition as we work to expand our impact in the coming years. To commemorate this special year, each of our graduates have, in Philadelphia today, received a silver cord to wear on your regalia. On behalf of the entire university and our board of trustees, we welcome our honored graduates and congratulate you on completing one of life's great achievements. Graduates, today marks a significant milestone in your lives. It represents an accomplishment, but also countless challenges faced and obstacles overcome, including a pandemic. WGU was founded to serve night owls, those who work diligently to earn their degrees while keeping their commitments to their families and their jobs. All of you have overcome much more by reaching this milestone during a pandemic. You have demonstrated your dedication, your persistence, your creativity, and your resilience. 
This achievement allows you to advance your careers and improve your communities in ways that are both measurable and immeasurable. You join only 33% of adults in the United States who hold bachelor's degrees. Many of you are graduating today with a family member. We offer special congratulations to those who are sharing this accomplishment with a loved one. WGU is grateful to be recognized year after year as a military-friendly university. Today is Armed Forces Day, and we are especially proud to honor the military members who are graduating. We thank you for your service to our country. You may have noticed that our military graduates are proudly wearing red, white, and blue cords today to symbolize their service to our country. We thank these brave and selfless patriots. Will you please stand up and be recognized right now? Also joining us are many of our WGU amazing faculty and staff. Please join me in thanking them for their dedication and commitment to your success. Thank you so much, faculty. Thank you, staff. We couldn't do it without you. You're heroes, each one of you. I'd like to share some facts about today's graduating class. 42% of you are the first in your family to earn a college degree. We extend a special congratulations to you. Your average age is 38 years young. The youngest is 19, and the oldest today is 72. A whopping 72% of you are women. The average time to earn a bachelor's degree was two years and 11 months, which is just amazing. 40 states are represented here today. The state with the most graduates, with 104 attendees, is Pennsylvania. Our graduate who traveled the farthest to join us today, more than 2,800 miles, is from Gerber, California. Thank all of you for your dedication and for being here today. You work diligently to reach an educational milestone that will change the course of your own history and influence future generations. Thank you for allowing all of us at WGU to play a part in the fulfillment of your dream. It has been our absolute privilege. And now we have the honor of hearing from two of your fellow graduates today. I'm delighted to introduce Priscilla Sales of Sequin, Washington who received her Bachelor of Science in Nursing. And then after that, we're going to hear from Rosa Balanila, Master, um, sorry, I am so sorry I did not get the pronouncer on this. Rosa Balanila Mateo from Staten Island, New York, Bachelor of Arts in Educational Studies, Elementary Education. Please welcome first up to the podium, Priscilla. Hello everyone, my name is Priscilla Sales and I want to congratulate all of you on successfully completing your bachelor's degrees. It is exciting to look back and realize that all of those late nights and long papers were worth it. Each one of us has a unique journey and I feel privileged to be able to share mine with you today. I grew up on 20 acres in Southern California with four siblings and parents who led by example. 
They are still the hardest workers that I know. At a young age, my parents taught me how to work hard and be responsible. Each person had to pull their own weight to ensure the smooth operation of a small ranch and orchard on well water, which meant we had to use generators to pump our own water, and no electricity, which meant we had to use solar as our energy source. My childhood was an adventure, spent taking care of farm animals, climbing trees, and going on long hikes around a flexible homeschool program. Unlike most kids my age, I learned how to use generators, use a weed eater, and watch out for rattlesnakes and tarantulas. Other adventures included surviving a drought and then a forest fire. As my high school days ended, I contemplated my future and wondered where my life would take me. I had a lot of nurses in my family and figured that I wanted to do something different and avoid that occupation. At 17 years old, I received the news that I had a large tumor growing on my spinal cord and pushing against my brain. The diagnosis was alarming, but also, strangely, gave me a sense of relief after two years of unexplainable, progressive neck pain. My emergency surgery at UCLA was 22 hours long. I had an extraordinary team of surgeons and nurses during my 12-day stay, nine of which I spent in the ICU. I entered the hospital scared and uncertain of my future, but I left with gratitude and a determination that one day I too would impact the lives of those around me. After graduation, I started my own caregiving business to finance my prerequisite courses while continuing to help my family on the ranch. I moved to Washington State at 22 years old, became a certified nursing assistant, and finally applied to a nursing program in the Seattle area that my two older sisters had just completed. Right around the time that I was completing the nursing program, my two sisters were completing their BSNs through WGU. As I started working on a busy med surge unit in a small rural hospital, my two sisters completed their MSNs. They had wonderful experiences and strongly recommended that I choose WGU to continue my education as well. After gaining experience for two years, along with navigating a complicated pandemic, I decided that I was ready to return to school. My experience at WGU has been fantastic, and I will never forget the wonderful faculty that have supported me from day one. I really appreciated the self-paced program and the engaging content. I feel like I have grown both as a nurse and as a person by completing each opportunity that this program offered. Program mentors and course instructors have provided me with the knowledge and the motivation <clears throat> that I needed when I was exhausted from working full time. They cheered me on and reminded me of the big picture. I'd like to give a shout out to Carrie, my program mentor, who has been an awesome resource during the last 11 months. I'd also like to give a shout out to my family for all of their amazing support. I'm so happy that I have completed my BSN through WGU, and I look forward to enrolling in the MSN program this summer. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, WGU, for helping make my dream a reality. Thank you so much for listening, and I wish each one of you all the best as you continue to make each of your dreams a reality as well. Growing up, I was obsessed with the game of Monopoly. At first, I thought the point was to just pass go as fast as I possibly could. I always chose the car as my token so that I could imagine myself speeding toward that go space. Yeah, I was that kid that made vroom vroom noises as I moved from space to space, and boy, the excitement I felt if I rolled anything above a double five on the dice was insurmountable because I would pass go in no time, right? Uh-oh, here come the chance spaces. I was on the edge of my seat every time I landed on one. If I landed on one right after rolling a 12, I wouldn't even know what to feel. 
Of course, some of the chance cards were great, like this one, but there were other cards that were not so great, like this one. And it seemed to me that every single time I was four spaces away from go, I would get a go to jail card, and suddenly I was 30 spaces away from go. I felt so frustrated being sent to jail, unable to advance and get closer to go. It took time to get out of that jail space too. You had to either roll a double, which for some reason was so difficult, pay $50 or wait three rolls and still pay to get out of jail. During all that time, it felt like everyone around you was advancing towards go and you would never catch up. I'm sure at this point you're wondering, where is she going with this? And I'll be honest, I asked myself the same question. And here's what I came up with. Every one of us is in a Monopoly game. Now bear with me, I promise it'll make sense. I won't talk about the entire Monopoly board, but instead I'll focus on three spaces, chance, jail, and go. Let's think of chance spaces as two things in life. First, there are moments when you're presented with a decision and you're not quite sure what the outcome will be. Simply put, it's those moments when we take a chance. You know those chance cards that tell you to advance to the nearest utility? It's this card right here. Right away, you know you'll either be paying someone or buying a utility from the bank. Now, let's say someone owns that utility. You must roll the dice to determine how much you'll be paying. That's where the uncertainty comes in. Will rent be $20? Will it be $120? you simply won't know until it's done. I think we've all had at least one of these moments. For me, it was a situation I faced as I was finishing my senior year of high school. I knew I wanted to go to college, but what kind of college? Would I attend public, private, two-year, four-year, in-state, out-of-state? So many variables, so many possibilities, and at the moment, no way to know which decision would lead where. It's almost like I was dealt a chance card that said, advance to the nearest crossroads. That one doesn't exist, by the way, but that's the chance card I imagine a lot of us picking up at some point in this Monopoly Life Edition. There are also moments when we have absolutely no choice but to deal with the circumstance. There's no decision to be made, no control over the situation. Think of these moments as that chance card that says, go back three spaces. Regardless of where you are on the board, you have no control over what happens. If you draw this card at the very first chance space, you're now in the income tax space, and what a terrible spot. If the game just started, you lose all the money you're given to begin with. You'd probably sit there and think, crap, how am I going to get ahead now? Think of a time when you embarked on a new phase in your life. A new school, new job, new home, new relationship, and it felt like you ran into an obstacle or a problem as soon as you started, making you take three steps back. But we all know that even though it seems like it's pretty much over just as it starts, the game goes on. It may take a while for you to get back on your feet and begin to make noticeable progress, but eventually you get back what you lost and more. That chance space in Monopoly that sent me back three spaces was this thing called COVID-19. Am I right? Didn't COVID-19 set us all back? I know we're probably all tired of hearing about COVID, but interestingly, it was a chance that brought me and a few others to WGU. At the very beginning of the pandemic, I had hope in strange ways. COVID brought us a lockdown that was perceived positively by some. We'd all get a two week break from work and school, but then two weeks became four weeks, three months, six months, and then it felt like we drew that dreaded go to jail card. One of the frustrating moments in Monopoly is getting this card and being sent to jail when you are so close to go. This puts you 30 spaces away from go and is super irritating not only because you are farther away from your goal, but now you're stuck unable to make progress. Many of us lost jobs, some of us lost friends and family members, and quarantine was brutal. But at one point during quarantine, I decided it was time to move past the jail space and I enrolled at WGU, unlocking a bright future. It took a few tries, a lot of attempts at rolling a double to get out of jail, but eventually I did it. At some point, we all did it because here we are on the go space. Now we all know Monopoly doesn't end when you hit go. 
the game goes on. Our version of Monopoly is a little different because we collect a different reward every time. This time, we're all earning a degree. Next time, maybe a new position at our dream job, a promotion, a wedding ring, parenthood, a new home, you name it. Remember, it's not about how fast you get there or even about the obstacles you, fa you face. It's about keeping hope alive when we run into unexpected circumstances and we know that there is always a way to move ahead. In conclusion, I'd like to thank a few people who helped me circle the board. Thank you, Mom, who's here today and who has consistently given me her love, support, encouragement, and advice throughout this journey. Thank you for instilling ambition in me and always reminding me that hard work, dedication, and action speak louder than anything else, and for teaching me that struggles and difficulties build character. I love you, Mom. Yeah, Mom. <laughs> I'm going to say this in Spanish now, because that's the language she speaks. Gracias, mami, por su constante amor, apoyo y consejos. Gracias por darme una fuente de ambición y por siempre recordarme que el esfuerzo, la dedicación y las acciones demuestran más que cualquier otra cosa. Y por enseñarme que las luchas y dificultades construyen el carácter. Te quiero mucho, mami. I'd also like to thank my brother, who's also here, for being a constant reminder that I got this, for reminding me of the passion that I have for education, and for being my biggest cheerleader in everything I do. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> thank you, Dad, and thanks to my aunt and the friends and family who've always believed in me. Thank you to Lakesia Trust for being an amazing program mentor, always answering my questions and being willing to work with me to determine the best course of action for both my goals and my circumstances. Lastly, thank you to WGU and every single one of you for being an amazing university and graduating cohort. Congratulations, graduates. We did it. Wow. Thank you, Priscilla and Rosa, for sharing your stories. Priscilla, what a life so far. Your determination and resiliency show just what our night owls are made of. Congratulations to you and your sisters who have earned their degrees from WGU as well. We love to make this family affair whenever we can. Uh, Rosa, I don't think I'll ever play Monopoly again without <laughs> thinking about you. This is an amazing metaphor. I just loved it. So well done. And, and your, your journey that you've been taking. Um, just make sure that you keep going so you can get wherever your journey past go will take you. Uh, and keep circling that board. Um, you know, collect your $200. Or <laughs> so um, thank you. Thank you both. Just wonderful. Now I'm pleased to introduce our commencement speaker, Johnny C. Taylor, Jr. Johnny is president and CEO of SHRM, the Society for Human Resource Management, based in Alexandria, Virginia. With over 300,000 members in 165 countries, SHRM is the largest HR trade association in the world impacting the lives of 115 million workers. Johnny is a much sought after voice on all matters affecting the world of work. He's the author of the national bestseller, Reset, a leader's guide to work in an age of upheaval, informed by data-driven insights from SHRM. Reset provides leaders a candid and forward-looking vision to reimagine their company cultures in a time of global upheaval. In Reset, Johnny advises, make constant reset your friend. Upheaval brings about opportunities to rethink, reset, and restructure your organization. Immediately upon its release in September 2021, Reset was in the top three of the Wall Street Journal's list of best-selling hardcover business books. 
All author proceeds benefit the Sherm Foundation, which is committed to empowering HR as a social force for change. Johnny was appointed chairman of the President's Advisory Board on historical black, Historically Black Colleges and Universities and served as a member of the White House American Workforce Policy Advisory Board during the Trump administration. He is vice chair of the Board of Trustees of his alma mater, the University of Miami, governor of the American Red Cross, and member of the corporate boards of Guild Education, ICMS, and XPOL Logistics. Please join me in welcoming national best-selling author and SHRM president and CEO, Johnny C. Taylor, Jr. Wow, thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Madam Provost. But more importantly, thank you all to the class of 2022, your loved ones who are in attendance, even if they're here virtually, right? The distinguished platform guests, WGU faculty, trustees, and administration. Uh, thank you for inviting me to participate as your keynote speaker for what will undoubtedly be one of your most important and memorable days of your life. Talking about a memorable day of my life, uh, Tuesday, I didn't think I'd be here. Uh, I thought I was gonna have to cancel this uh, commencement speech, at least me being here. You all were gonna graduate no matter what. But I received a call that my father, who I love dearly, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, had his fourth stroke. And this time, it was pretty, pretty bad. So my sister called me and I, of course, called my assistant and said, immediately start canceling everything because I've got to get to Florida where I'm born and raised and take care of my dad. So thank you to the nurses here in the room. Well, I'm pleased to say uh, they, they did their work. They did a phenomenal job. Sure, the physicians were there, but I can tell you the people who made the real difference for my father and part of the reason that I'm here are the nurses. So thank you. I literally want to thank you all. Your heroes. But if that wasn't enough, at about 6.45 this morning, after flying in from Florida last night, my sister called all in a panic and said, guess what? Dad has turned for the worse, and the hospital has asked us all to get back there. I was like, oh, no. And I had a choice to make. You want to talk about the Monopoly board. I had a choice to make, and it was to deliver on my commitment to spend this day with you or go see my dad. And the fact of the matter is, I believe my dad's gonna make it, but I really, really, really wanted to be here with you all today. I'm committed to you all. I'm committed to delivering this message, and thank you. Specifically to the class of 2022, words cannot adequately express the happiness, literally the happiness that I feel for you today. I encourage and, in fact, implore each of you to take a victory lap. You know, too often we don't appreciate the now. You're so busy waiting to, you know, I hear people talking about, I'm gonna go get my master's, I'm gonna get my doctorate, I'm gonna go get this and get that. Enjoy the moment, class of 2022. <laughs> Enjoy the moment, right? <laughs> you know, and this class in particular, and it's why I wanted to be here today. You know, I do commencement speeches every year, a couple, I pick and choose them. But there's something very unique about the WGU student and your experience. You see, I'm usually sitting down with the typical 22-year-old. The fact of the matter, as the provost mentioned, is your average age is 38 years old. I'm typically at high-end private schools where, you know, 90% of the students are not first-time graduates, first-time college graduates, their families, they're not first generation. 42% of you are. And 72% of the class is women. I mean, this is highly, think about who you are and what you represent. I remembered after taking eight years of Latin, just one phrase, <laughs> just one, and it was Winnie, witty, wiki. I came, I saw, I conquered. That's the most important message for you all to realize is that you had your jobs, your lives, your families, you had all of that going on, yet you graduated in fewer than three years. And we know that most people in higher education are taking six years to give a college degree if they get one at all. 
So you're an impressive lot, and I wanted to be here today to tell you that personally. I run the world's largest HR association, and you all are the workers, the leaders of the future. And so I have a personal vested interest in congratulating you and what you've achieved. Once again, congratulations. So as I reflected on, on what to share with you on this very special day, I decided that there was one phrase that was strictly forbidden, right? An absolute no-no when I was your age. That is the worst thing in the world, right? First, from being a non-traditional student body, some of you might actually be my age, okay? Shout out to the Generation X's in the room, right? All right, let's hear it, right? But more importantly, I'm certain each of you has heard these words, read these words, perhaps even repeated these words countless times. But can any one of you honestly recall a single instance when what followed that phrase was something helpful, edifying, or even memorable? Because the fact of the matter is, I was never your age. I was my age. Yes, I still remember fondly being in my early 20s, sitting attired in cap and gown, looking like a little penguin as you are, right? <laughs> Listening to people who were not my age, telling me in so many words that the world was my oyster. But they didn't know my experience. But let me tell you, the world in May 1989, when I graduated, was a very different place than it is today. For example, no one told us or could have told us that we would be at war in the Persian Gulf just a year later. Nor were we told that we would live to see the birth of the internet. Yes, there once was a time when there was no internet, okay? Three presidential impeachments, the 9-11 attacks. I remember where I was at the time. Not one, not two, but three economic recessions the near collapse of the American financial system. Many of you were panicked about the stock market last week. Let me tell you, I lived through it. There weren't 401ks, there were 201ks. I mean, it was all wiped out, right? Political and social polarization that's not been seen since the Civil War, a once in a century global, not just US pandemic that killed over one million Americans and countless tens of millions of Americans around a people around the globe. And then the first, first African-American woman appointed to serve on the highest court of our land. I saw all of that and no one could have told us to be prepared for that. The reality is none of us can prepare you for what's to come. Because if we know anything about life, it's always subject to change. And in this era, which is defined by change, your lives are gonna be filled with change I want to pause and share with you just three things that have been tossing around in my head and in my heart, yes, at my age. First, you are graduating at a pivotal time in history, into the tail end of the information era and the beginning of what we're calling the augmented era. Now, more than ever, our lives will be lived, lived in the realm of data, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and machine learning. As the president and CEO of the world's largest trade association dedicated to the world of work, I see this every day. And as a data nerd, I couldn't be more thrilled. Yet, having dedicated most of my professional life to the law and to human resources, I want to issue a word of caution to all of you. And this is not just for the business and IT majors, but for all of you, whether you're in healthcare, education, and yes, human resources. By the way, can I tell you something? I run the world's largest trade association. Guess what's the largest student chapter in the world for SHRM? The WGU SHRM student chapter. So I got to shout out my HR majors in the group. <laughs> largest. We're in 500 campuses and you're the largest in the world for us. But here's what I wanted to tell you. Machines, regardless of their speed, their efficiency, or their capacity, can never adequately substitute for the greatest computer that's ever created, and it is the human mind. As B.F. Skinner, the father of behavioral psychology, once said, the real problem in this world is not whether machines think, but whether men or women do. We cannot lose sight of the fact that machines were made to serve humankind, not the other way around. 
as Elon Musk learned in 2017 when Tesla attempted to fully automate production of its Model 3 electric vehicles. Tweeted Musk after many of us told him this would turn out this way, excessive automation at Tesla was a mistake. And he said, to be precise, it was my mistake as the CEO. Humans are underrated. As Mr. Musk admitted, there are just some essential functions that machines can never replicate, such as creativity, critical thinking, vision, imagination, strategy, and leadership, much of what you've learned during your tenure at WGU. I would encourage you to lean into your, uniquely, your unique, I should call it, superpower, and that is of being a human being. Don't be afraid of technology, use it. Use it to make the world a better, a fairer, and a more equitable place. Secondly, and I want to talk about this from my heart because I think we have a real big problem in our country. It's probably the most significant issue confronting us. I would argue that it's bigger than anything else, and I call it the empathy deficit. Stick with me, the empathy deficit. For a lot of reasons that we can point to, stark political divisions, the isolation that's been made by easy by technology, the deterioration of civility, we have given up on understanding the hearts of our fellow human beings. We've collectively, my friends, lost the ability to look through others' eyes and to walk in their shoes. I often ask myself, and today I ask you, how did we arrive at this empathy gap? this deficit. We've set up permanent rivalries, me versus you. We're increasingly tribal as a society, and we live in a world of separate identities. Heck, we're as diverse as we've ever been as a country, yet we're as divided as we've ever been as a country. If it's not red versus blue, it's men versus women. It's urban versus rural, black versus white versus brown, immigrant or native blue collar versus white collar versus pink collar, millennial versus baby boomers and Generation Z. Even more sinister though, and underlying this divide are messages like, if you aren't with me, you're against me. I'm right, so that makes you wrong. You're not like me, so I don't like you. Someone like you hurt me, so I'm going to hurt you back. It's this lack of empathy it's widespread, and it's widespread because lacking empathy is extremely easy these days, class of 2022. It takes no thought and it takes no sacrifice to reject or invalidate someone else. And it happens at work a lot. And much of it can be done quite handily on the anonymous internet. Look at the media we consume. It has become so fragmented. We can curate exactly the right messages that make us feel good or feel aggrieved, depending upon what entertains us for the day. We don't even have to know what the other person's side, what their opinion is, or their experiences are. As long as it's different, it's fair game. And the empathy deficit shows up every day, I'm telling you, my friends. This isn't just a class of 22, it's all the folks in the room, right? Because you know it if you're working. Every day. And that means you're gonna feel it in your careers, in your lives, in your communities, in your neighborhoods. Much of the resurgence of DE&I programming in the wake of the horrible, horrible killing of George Floyd was supposed to encourage open conversation and mutual understanding. But too often, it bypassed empathy. Well-meaning programs dissolved, evolved into grievance sessions, a way for one group to beat up on another group in a so-called safe space rather than listening and trying to relate to the other's experiences. For years, we've seen fellow Americans face off, shouting at, another, at, at each other over ideology. But I want you to think about this. Deep down, don't we all really want the same thing? To make a decent living, to care for our families, to enjoy personal freedom, to pursue happiness, not to have to put these masks back on, right? We all just want that, right? The problem is we each want to do it our own way. Although we have the same goals, we aren't unified by them. We have been conditioned to think only of ourselves, which is the polar opposite of empathy. Society is now all about the individual. We've become a have it your way culture, a Burger King culture. 
And we've created that, and now it's expected. And we, we need to continue to feed this very divisive and counterproductive approach to remain competitive for talent in the workplace. But once upon a time, societies and politics did not celebrate the individual above all. They were grounded in this notion of a common good and collective responsibility. It was that search, that search for commonality that enabled early humans to survive as a species when isolation meant death or extinction. The fact of the matter is, as humans, we actually want to know and understand each other. And it's why empathy is not necessarily something we need to teach you all or that you need to learn. It's inherent in human nature. So it's more like something we need to exercise a little bit more. Empathy is a muscle that we all have and it has atrophied. We need to strengthen it. We have an American problem. And class of 2022, it's your generation's responsibility to strengthen empathy in our society. It's your obligation to use this degree for something other than yourself, to close the empathy gap, to reverse the deficit. One last thing about empathy, and I want you to keep this in mind, it's not a soft skill, it's a business skill. Yes, business today demands empathetic leadership. All of us want to work for a more empathetic leader, right? It's what enables people to work cooperatively with others who have very different experiences, diversity, preferences, diversity, styles, and opinions. Yes, diversity. But here's the scary thing. Our data from Sherm Research tells us that empathy in our society, especially at work, is on a downward slide. When rating their organization's empathetic behaviors, both employees and HR have been giving declining scores since 2018, in the middle of a pandemic. In new research on Generation Z, the workforce that will be entering through the workplace in significant numbers, we can see the desirability of empathy at work. 83% of Generation Z, and by the way, you can't get 83% of them to agree on anything, <laughs> have said that they would choose an employer with a strong culture of empathy over an employer who's offering a higher salary. And that same 83% said they would consider leaving their current organization, a job that they like, for a similar role at another more empathetic organization. As you graduate class of 2022, let's approach every problem and every challenge and frankly every person by putting the we before the me. When we build our empathy muscles, we have an opportunity to make an impact that will be felt in homes and communities around the world. B.F. Skinner, I love this guy, also said, education is what survives when what has been learned has been forgotten. Yes, you may and you're very likely to forget some of what you've learned over the last two years and 11 months on average, right? But what you will never forget is how to learn, in terms of how to learn is that every human being has a desire to learn or the ability to know other people and the desire to help others. We believe that in our core. When it comes to learning, take a few more tips from a lifelong learner. First of all, stay curious, ask questions, and then question the answers. Always be intentional about learning. Always be willing to venture into unknown territory and open to possibilities. Stay cognizant of opportunities to apply your learning for the betterment of others, not just yourself, and get comfortable with being uncomfortable because that's the world that you're walking into. These are the stamps of a true learned person a sheer commitment to learning, exploration, and discovery. That describes each of you, a night owl. So finally, I, I like that, right? <laughs> I tickle myself sometimes. So listen, as I leave the stage, I want to share one more lesson that grows closer to my heart every day as I grow older. I'm amazed that you have the range that you have 19 year olds graduating and 72 year olds graduating. And let me assure you, the closer you get to 70, the younger it looks. Um, but here's the message. And I want you, nothing else I've talked about is remember this, live a full life. There are no replays at this thing called life. If I had to do it all over again, well, let me tell you, I talked to someone, 85 year old woman who learned that she was dying. And she wrote this that I want to share with you as I leave the stage today. And it's written, it's called, If I Had to Live It All Over Again. If I Had to Live Life All Over Again. 85-year-old resident of Louisville, Kentucky. She said, 
If I had my life to live over again, I'd try to make more mistakes the next time. She said, I wouldn't try to be so perfect. We all have these perfection fetishes. What difference does it make if people know that you're imperfect? They can then identify with you because nobody can identify with perfection. She says, if I had to live it all over again, I'd relax more. I'd be sillier than I've been on this trip. In fact, I know very few things that I would take so seriously. I'd be crazier. I'd be less hygienic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to the nurses in the room, right? I'd take more chances. I'd climb more mountains. I'd watch more sunsets. She said, I'd go more places I've never seen. I'd eat more ice cream and fewer beans. I'd have more actual troubles and fewer imaginary ones. You see, she said, I was one of these people who lived sensibly and sanely, hour after hour and day after day. And oh, I've had my moments, Johnny, and if I had to do it all over again, I'd have more of those moments. In fact, I'd try to have nothing but beautiful moments, moment by moment by moment. Because in case you didn't know it, that's the stuff life is made of, moments. So she said, don't miss the now. She said, I've been one of those people who never went anywhere without a thermometer, a hot water bottle, a gargle, a raincoat, and a parachute. She said, if I had to do it all over again, I'd travel lighter the next time. If I had to do it all over again, I'd start barefoot earlier in the spring and stay that way until later in the fall. I'd ride more merry-go-rounds, I'd watch more sunrises, and I'd play with more children if I had to do it all over again. Ladies and gentlemen, class of 2022, don't write this. I want you all to have the fullest life that you can have. Do the thing, because all we know is you got one shot at it. God bless you, and thank you for having me here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Johnny. That was, that was really wonderful. Thank you for being here. Um, I encourage everyone here today to exercise your empathy muscle and create your own beautiful moments. Johnny, we truly appreciate you being here with us today, given everything that's going on. And we hope your father recovers. And we truly thank you for sharing your message with us. It was incredibly encouraging and motivating. Thank you. And now, back to you. Uh, and we have Dr. Lucas Cavley, who will confer your degrees. Lucas? Thank you, Marnie. This is the best time for each of you, because we get to recognize our bachelor's degree graduates. So. Would the candidates for bachelor's degrees and post-baccalaureate teacher preparation endorsements please stand up if you are able? There's none of you that's graduating today? <laughs> Come on now. There we go. We're getting you closer. So, you know, for, for an institution that, that uh, thrives on disruption, we've got to figure out a different way to say that because nobody ever stands up at that point. So it's upon the favorable recommendation of our faculty and the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and the member governors of Western Governors University that I hereby confer upon each of you the bachelor's degree or the endorsement that you've earned. This includes the Bachelor of Arts, the Bachelor of Science, or the post-baccalaureate teacher preparation endorsement with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. You may now move your tassel from one side to the other of your motorboard. Congratulations on this huge, important milestone in each of your lives. So do me a favor and sit for just a moment. 
Soon you'll be able to run up the stairs just like Rocky here in a little bit. But before then, we're going to have the following leaders from each of our schools and colleges invite the graduates from their individual schools and colleges for their moments in the spotlight. First, we're going to hear from Dr. Victor Aluisa. He's the academic vice president for the College of Business. Second, we'll bring up Scott Jones. He's the academic operations vice president for the College of Health Professions. Thirdly, we'll bring up Ashutosh Tiwari. He is the Senior Vice President and the Executive Dean for the College of Information Technology. And last but not least, we'll bring up Dr. Stacy Ludwig-Johnson. She's the Vice President of Operations for the Teachers College. Victor. Fantastic. Will the graduates from the College of Business, starting in the first row forward, come at the direction of the marshals to be recognized individually? Joe Beamer the fourth. Joe Sheffield. Latasha Wyas. Katrina Thomas. Brandon Altman. Tammy Bass. Tracy Esterling. Jason Lopez. Marcus Fleming. John Lehman. Russell Broadhurst. Marquette Carney. Melanie Stone. Sierra Sanders. Crystal Ballantyne. Ashley Lester. Kayla Savage. Kayla Lawson. Christina Ali. April Keatley. Kimberly Butler. Tawana Renee Best. Rachel Hart. Darius Morris. Talisha Yates. Nancy Harris. Novella Winborn. Jeffrey Najaro Orozco. Christy Morris. Jessica Mast. Jeffrey Norton. Ann Romano. Nina Burns. 
Rhonda Burgess. Mohammed Karim. Leilani Tolliver. Kamasita Ramla. Sheila Masalagani. Igor Iovanovich. Melissa Utronich. Aretha Pitts. Kara Polunsi. Angel Jimmerith. Danica Blue. Maria Bertsa Correas. Melissa Young. Aquila Hayes. Alyssa Lamas. Megan Lene Riley. J. Corey Babel. Maria Battle Miller. Obed Boateng. Patricia Trexler. Maurice Washington. Hannah Azad. Victoria Bodek. Regina Minton. Tracy Pace. Brianna Hampson. Deirdre McBride. Angeline Reeder. Nene Dante. Clay Campbell. Kara Gomez. Dale Killip. Renee Henson. Paris Overton. Christy Karen. Otavia Kennedy. Alicia Carolina Gibbs Medina. LaVon Fowler. Yvonne Phillips. Tiffany Daniel. Portia Garboldo. Miss Karam Teka. Amanda Detweiler. Richard Ricks. A Amira Rollins.
Miriam Shevlin. Sarah Cole. Rosanna Corbin. Robin Levin Lopez. Congratulations to the, our graduates from the College of Business. College of Health Professions, where's our graduates? Woo! Woo! <laughs> We'd like to welcome our College of Health Profession graduates, starting with the first role, to come and get recognized individually. Priscilla Sales. Fanta Trawali. Alicia Edwards. Marcella Heinzman. Regina Villanella. Angel Graniello. Gerwinder Carr. Nikita Pond Bruno. Jennifer Ortiz. Melissa Portillo. Lorraine Chabon. Rashid Hester Johnson. Diane Suggests. Valicia Holloway. Alicia Lewis. Yesenia, Yesenia Ramos Linares. Maxine Silberman. Catherine Malco. Caitlin Willen. Kaziah Moki. Francis Holmes. Julianne Hall. Shakima Griffin. Caitlin Overcash. Nicholas Yulinko. Cornelia Davis. Ellie Labarada. Janet Johnson. Naima Herman. Veronica Killings. Charlene Dowson. Raymond Kangogo.
Tabitha Sanders. Lucinda Taylor. Carlina Moore. Miriam Mishricki. Candida La Riviere. Carleen Porter. Alicia Franklin. Brittany Monroe. Jeremy Bevel. Davina Calloway. Shanae Francis. Vicki Donahue. Crystal White. Alyssa Westling. Marie Sims. Tara Michelle Washington. Sharika Turner. Regina Loga. Kelsey Baker. Vivin Endo. Lynette Caraballo. Karina Delgado. Latoya McSwain. Cheryl James. Sade Graham. Congratulations to all the graduates from WGU's College of Health Professions. It's now time for the College of IT students to stand up and be recognized for this great achievement. Graduates, please stand up. The College of Information Technology, starting with the first row, please come forward at the direction of the marshals to be recognized individually. Justin Thomas. Michelle Santos. Alan Gregos. Jessica Hartzell. Joseph Graham. Adama Punda. Leander Herrera. Asma Remen. Jay 
Jeffrey Norfolk. George Duodu. Vince Smithers the Fourth. Emmanuel Neville Cordy. Ian Thomas. Darcia Reyes. Georgie Milligan. Esmail Tahir. Garrett Wood. Christopher Sanchez. Nikki Rosario. Kalechioma Alton. Sean Gilbert. Andrew Obi. Ashley Culey. Patrick Burgess. Dale Strickland. Mitchell Williams. Kenneth Young. Worth Beerbaum. Ryan Hopp. Jasmine Pickert. Matthew Davies. Richard Ilseng Chang. Philip Rana. Congratulate. Congratulate. Congrat. Congratulations. All right, where's the WGU Teachers College? We are so proud of the work that you've done. You survived very rigorous programs, and you've made a commitment to make a difference in our nation. So we're very excited to have you come forward and follow the directions of the marshals and be recognized individually. Thank you. Caleb De La Rosa. Kayla Kreger. Melissa Gates. Jasmine Arias. Lee Ann Reeves. Ambria Smith. Allison Rose. Hannah Parshall. Alexis Foster. Amanda Griffin. Amanda Bly. Erica Wilhelm. Amber Lynn Presley. 
Kelsey Angelo. Brittany Vargas. Sarah Baxter. Rachel Reeves. Mallory Cotto. Pauline Wojner. Rhonda Teresa Preston Mack. Rosa Valenino Mateo. Thomas Rogers. Suhela Quinn. Stacy Westberg. Anastasia Lindenman. Brittany Slater. Kristen Gordon. Haley DaCosta. Jennifer Miller. Haley Anderson. Christina Broadhurst. Michelle Peterson. Laura Herman. Noel Tiffany Douglas. Emily Hargrave. Holly Stewart. Jacob Lofrida. Julie Hagen. Janie Chandler. Melanie Gaspar. Christine Marcinkowitz. Philip Ruder V. Selena Fields. Rose Marie Chichester. April Waddell. Charlena Bryson. Miriam Dardofsky. Skylar Urban. Robin Cornelius. Valerie C. Jackson Pierce. Lauren Bryan. Jennifer Christ. <laughs> Paula Moyer. Tracy Bell. Jennifer Pulowski. <laughs> Fabia Mustafa. Amanda Karsich. Darna McFarlane. Robert Gray.
Congratulations to all of the graduates from WGU's Teachers College. Congratulations, graduates. And now I'm delighted to introduce Shane Moore, who is representing our growing alumni community. In 2014, Shane earned his bachelor's in information technology. Today, he is the Vice President of Information Technology at Philadelphia Industrial Development Corporation. He's a husband, father, mentor, volunteer, and pastor. Welcome, Shane. Good afternoon, WGU graduates. As a proud graduate of WGU, and on behalf of the more than 275,000 WGU alumni worldwide, I welcome you to our Alumni Association. It wasn't long ago that I was in your shoes, completing my bachelor's degree in information technology. WGU provided an enriching, an engaging student experience for me, and I'm happy to share that my learning and engagement didn't stop when I graduated. My hope is that your experience will be the same. After all, we are night owls for life. I invite and encourage you to stay engaged with the many benefits WGU has to offer through the WGU Alumni Association, including free learning resources, career coaching, benefits, regional and national events, and much more. Visit wgu.edu forward slash alumni to stay engaged. Congratulations, Night Owls, and I'll see all of you in the Alumni Network. Thank you, Shane. It's been my pleasure to see your success as a WGU graduate and what you've been able to accomplish in your community right here in Philadelphia. Graduates, as we conclude this ceremony, I'd like to take this moment to recognize and thank those of you wearing blue and gold philanthropy cords for your generosity and your support of WGU's Fellow Night Owl Scholarship. Philanthropy cords are not only a physical symbol of a graduate's commitment to WGU, but they also support a legacy that will last for generations to come. Thanks to the incredible support of these alumni and thousands of alumni before them, We've raised more than $180,000 for the Fellow Night Owl Scholarship. And to date, this has helped nearly 150 students cross the finish line to graduation. Thank you. Thank you so much. For many of you, earning your diploma is the fulfillment of a lifelong goal. The degree you have earned at WGU will create new pathways to opportunity, but it's important to remember that commencement truly is not the end. It represents a new beginning. Whenever you choose to do, whatever you choose to do, know you'll do it well and great things will follow. You've already demonstrated many wonderful abilities, and I look forward to seeing each of you and what you achieve in your next chapter. It's also important to remember that learning is a lifelong journey. As you continue your journey, I encourage you to help support others who are pursuing their dreams, and also to seek out meaningful ways that you can support your communities. While each of you have endured hardships during the past two years, you persevered. 
Your strength and resilience during uncertain times will add tremendous value to your families and your workplaces and to your communities. Overcoming adversity is a remarkable skill that can change the world for the better, and I am confident that you will. On behalf of the entire WGU family, I commend you for your tenacity, which has led to this important moment and this incredible celebration. It reminds me of the words from our beloved Pennsylvania native, Fred Rogers, that's Mr. Rogers. It's not so much what we have in this life that matters, it's what we do with what we have. He also said, often when you think you're at the end of something, you're actually at the beginning of something. As we close today, I hope you'll take a moment to reflect on the pride you felt during this ceremony and as you step out into this new beginning. Thank you for letting us be a part of your education journey. As you celebrate today, have fun, and please share your excitement on social media using the hashtag WGUGrad. We're all looking for them, and we want to heart them, so please show us your pride. Um, and with that, congratulations, and this concludes our ceremony. Thank you all.
Right. <laughs> <laughs> now it's crazy.